Hello and welcome to the Faculty of Engineering virtual celebration event for our graduating students, the class of 2021. My name is Professor Ian Bond and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering. It is my pleasure to welcome you all today. So here we are together in this virtual space when of course we expected to be welcoming you in person to your graduation ceremonies this month. Instead, we are here together virtually to take this opportunity to celebrate the completion of your time with us. <clears throat> As you will have heard, this is not a virtual graduation event. You will all be invited back to celebrate your awards when we are able to safely hold those events. But we do hope to, that today gives you a chance to reflect on your time living and studying at university and in the city and to look to your future. Some 10,000 of our students, both undergraduate and postgraduate, are finishing their studies at Bristol in 2021. Today we celebrate our students from the Faculty of Engineering who have studied for many years across our School of Computer Science, Electrical and Electronic Engineering and Engineering Mathematics, and our School of Civil Engineering, Aerospace Engineering and Mechanical Engineering. A warm welcome to you all. I would also like to give a warm welcome to our guest speakers today. Professor Hugh Brady, Vice Chancellor and President of the University. Amy Conroy, a student recently awarded with a Master's in Computer Science. Dr. Tom Carter, alumnus of Computer Science and CTO of UltraLeap, a world leading hand tracking and haptic solution company. And finally, we're joined by some of the faculty staff and many familiar faces who will give you a wave now. Before we get started today, a few housekeeping notes for you and what to expect for the next hour. You will see that for staff and students on the webinar, the chat function is open for you to use. Please do take the opportunity to thank staff and friends and to celebrate and reminisce. But please do use this responsibly and remember that this is a celebration event for everyone. If you would like to submit a question for Tom, you can do so via the Q&A box below. This whole event will be recorded to share with those that were unable to join us live. You will see, you will, you will see have seen your pre-submitted messages before the event. These will also be shown again at the end of the event. And if you haven't yet had a chance to submit a message, you can do so now via the link in the chat. If you do want to use any social media during the event, please use hashtag Bristol Class of 2021. We are delighted to have BSL interpreters Connor and Catherine with us today. I would now like to introduce Professor Hugh Brady, Vice Chancellor and President of the University of Bristol to say a few words. Thank you, Ian, and good morning, everybody. Welcome to the University of Bristol to our virtual celebration. Uh, as Ian said, my name is Hugh Brady and I'm the Vice Chancellor and President of the University. Um, a special welcome obviously to the, to the class of 2021, but also to, I'm sure, many virtual guests who are dialing in or possibly look, just looking over your shoulders. As Ian said, this is not, of course, the event that you imagined when you entered the university. But the very fact that you're celebrating online today during a global pandemic is a testament to your hard work, your ingenuity, and the resilience that you've shown over the past two academic years. We're incredibly proud of you. We're very aware of the many hours, the many difficult hours you spent working towards this day. You've worked hard for your success. You've truly earned it. And it's been challenging, yes, but it's been a real privilege for us to be part, to have been part of that journey. I hope you found your uh, Bristol experience both challenging and rewarding and, and above all of course i hope you really enjoyed it william butler yates uh, said that education is not the filling of a pail but the lighting of a fire and we hope that you used your time at the university of bristol not just to acquire the knowledge and skills that will advance your career but also a love of learning of research and exploration that will enrich every aspect of your lives over the decades to come. I just have sh three short requests for you this morning. The first, I hope that uh, you'll appreciate that a, a degree from our university, a degree from the University of Bristol is a badge of excellence that is recognized across the globe because of the quality of our staff. Your lecturers and professors are international experts in their areas of scholarship, pushing back the frontiers of knowledge through their research and deeply committed 
uh, to their teaching mission. As you know, their efforts have been matched by equally committed professional services and operations staff, all focused on your success. The past 18 months have been extraordinarily difficult and challenging for you, but it has also been very, very difficult for all of our staff, and their response has been truly incredible. So my first request is that please take time afterwards to seek them out and thank them. I know they'll really appreciate that. My second request, well, I'm sure that for many, or indeed probably most of you, your success was more than likely a team effort. I bet that you have had many friends, partners, family members, supporters, or mentors who've traveled the journey with you, who, who supported you in so many different ways, who've probably lived your anxieties as well as sharing your dreams, and who now deserve to celebrate your success with you. So again, I'd ask you to take some time, whether it's today or over the coming days, to seek them out and to thank them. My final request is that you stay in touch with your alma mater. Today you become graduates of a, of, of a great university, a, a university that has shown as a beacon of excellence in learning, research and scholarship for well over a century, competing successfully with the very best institutions across the globe. And the esteem with which your alma mater is held is a testament to the quality and achievements of the university's students, staff and alumni over so many decades. Now, we have big plans for the university, but we won't realize our full potential without your help. If we're to continue to compete with the very best universities in the world, we need you to be part of that effort. And there are so many different ways that you can help. We have many alumni who come back and serve as mentors and advisors uh, to our students, and, and you've probably availed of some of their expertise already. Uh, we have others who help us arrange work placements, internships, and other val valuable training and employment opportunities, who support student clubs, societies, and halls of residence associations, and who give us valuable financial support for student scholarships, for research, and for other projects. But perhaps more than anything, you can help by serving as ambassadors and advocates for univers your university. Today, you join the rank of literally tens of thousands of Bristol graduates across the globe who serve as ambassadors for their alma mater on a daily basis. Through their values, their words, their actions, the way they conduct themselves in work and life, and the fondness and passion they retain, retain for the University of Bristol. We hope that you'll follow their example. The University of Bristol Alumni Association is not only a great way to stay in touch with us, but also to stay in touch with each other. And, and remember, from a practical point of view, you can avail of our career service for three years after you leave, and many of our graduating students do that. So congratulations again. As I said earlier, it has been a real privilege for us to be part of your journey so far, and I'll now hand back over to the Dean. Thank you very much, Professor Brady. <clears throat> so, so as Professor Brady mentioned, it has been a very unusual time, and we are mindful that we cannot fully understand what it's like to be finishing our studies in these circumstances. So we're really pleased to have one of your peers who will give some reflections on behalf of you all. Your university career will have been about hard work and academic achievement, but it will also have been about friendships and relationships you've made along the way. So I'd now like to hand over to Amy Conroy, uh, an LLB graduate, but who has recently awarded a Master's in Computer Science and is now a full-time legal engineer, to give some reflections on behalf of you all. So over to you, Amy. Thank you, Professor Ian Bond, for the warm introduction, and good morning, class of 2020. It's an honor to be speaking with you today as you take this opportunity to reflect back on your time at Bristol and celebrate having finished your studies. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Amy Conroy, an international student all the way from Canada, and I recently completed my master's in computer science. Prior to that, I graduated with my law degree, also at Bristol, which I was awarded in 2019. Suffice to say, I'm sure that very few of us imagined that we'd be here nearly a year and a half after we first started studying at home, still at home, having a virtual celebration. 
I'm sure for a lot of us, there's nothing we'd love more than to be celebrating our hard work with our friends and family in person. I'm also sure a lot, if not most of us here, at some point during the last year thought that we wouldn't be able to do it. It was incredibly hard to cope with a changing world while also writing code for your final year project, but you did it. That in itself is something that you can take away as you prepare to turn the blank page on the next chapter of your life. Getting through the last year, never mind your entire degree, I'm sure wasn't a solo battle. So I just wanted to take a moment to thank some of the people that might have gotten us over that final hurdle. That might be one of the amazing personal tutors who reached out to you to check, to check in while they themselves were probably struggling with the change to work from home, or a lecturer who took the time to write a thoughtful reference letter for you. Maybe a flatmate who brought you a cup of tea while you were cramming for an exam, or a family member who, despite not fully understanding what you're actually learning on your degree, is still your number one fan and cheerleader. Whoever it was, thank you. I think it's quite important to look back on your time at Bristol and remember it as centering around the experiences you had in a wonderful city with amazing people, instead of the focal point being finishing your degree in your childhood bedroom. Not only are you leaving with a degree, but I'm sure for most of us, we're leaving Bristol with a new home and a new family. So what I'd like you to do is take a moment to think of a memory from your time at Bristol that makes you happy, or one that makes you smile, or one that makes you laugh. This might be tobogganing down Cabot Tower on a baking sheet after it unexpectedly snowed, or trudging through the mud during Freshers Fair to get those spoons vouchers, or the rush to get a seat in the library during exams because it made total sense to queue up half an hour early. Maybe it was waiting for your Jason Donovan's order on a particularly late night, or taking your allotted break from the library to go sunbathe outside, or going to play ping pong in MVB. Whatever it was that triggers that happy feeling for you, I want you to hold on to that. You won't remember the challenges and hard moments, although I'm sure there were a few, but instead you'll think of those moments that brought you that feeling of happiness and share the stories with your family that made you laugh. These are the memories that shaped our university experience. And the collection of these moments spent with friends and peers is one of the most important things that will come out of your time at Bristol. It is these moments that you reflect on in the years to come as you think back to the good old days. I want to end my speech with a bit of a personal story. There was a time in the first year of my undergrad, right after I got a horrible essay result back, that I thought I wouldn't be able to finish my degree and I wasn't cut out for uni. Half the reason for that was because I saw everyone around me securing internships for the summer after getting amazing results. I got on the phone with my mum and she said to me, Amy, there is no set path or prescribed timeline for your life. Do not compare your journey with anyone else's. So whether you have your next steps planned out or not, I hope you're confident in the fact that what you learned both inside and outside of MVB or Queens has more than prepared you for what's next. The friendships made, the lessons you've learned while coping with being forced to adapt to learning through Zoom and at a two meter distance, and more generally your time in an amazing city will have given you the skills that you need to take those first steps down the path that no one has gone down before. And remember, this is just the beginning. You don't need to know what comes next, you just need to keep moving forward. You have proven that you're more than capable over the past two years especially to battle against unexpected hurdles and come out on top. Say yes, seize the opportunities as they come, even if it wasn't what you expected or it didn't match with your plan for the future. Because let's be honest, we've learned how quickly life can throw a wrench in our plans. And to be completely honest, most of us will just keep making it up as we go along. I hope you reflect on your degree and time at Bristol with pride and a sense of accomplishment, because despite all of the roadblocks along the way, especially those unique to the class of 2021, you did it. Thank you everyone for listening. I look forward to seeing you back in Bristol again soon. Congratulations again, class of 2021. Thank you very much, Amy, for that insightful and very personal reflection on your time at Bristol. So. We know the time at Bristol has been a rich and varied one for everyone. Um, and the staff that have taught you, the professional services staff that have supported you, and the wider city that has hosted you have all shaped your experiences with us. And there are many people uh, who can't be at this event today who would like to wish you well. So if we're just going to take a moment to, to hear from them. Well, congratulations to the class of 2021. 
This has been a, a really difficult year for us all, but hopefully it's the year that you'll be able to celebrate because of your achievements. You've shown tremendous grit and determination and we're really proud of you. The highlight of my course would be the people on my course. Everyone was really welcoming and friendly. The friends I've made on this course that I would never have met otherwise has yeah, just been the best experience. A lot of the people I met in first year are still really good friends today. The best thing about living in this city is it's potentially the best student city in the UK. There are so many things to do from food to bars to pubs to clubbing and at the same time you get top quality education. Some of my favourite places in Bristol are all the parks like the Downs, Ashton Court, I really love them, they're really vibrant spaces. Castle Park is such a nice and pretty place. Cabot Tower. St Nick's Market. Harbour side because it's really nice to go down there and relax after a long day of studying in Will's Memorial. When I talk to people about Bristol, they talk to me about a city that's buzzing, that's vibrant, that, that's alive and exciting. And I think that is in no small part because we're a university city, it's because of what you've all brought to the city of Bristol. You're part of it, you're part of our city story and I thank you for that. Congratulations class 2021. Congratulations. Congratulations. And we hope to see you soon. <laughs> All the best for the future. You've been brilliant. Huge congratulations to getting to the end of what has been a crazy year. Congratulations to everyone. And if you're sticking around Bristol, looking forward to see you come down here. Congratulations guys. Graduated. Very good. We are hiring. I know that many of you have supported our city over the last 18 months as volunteers and I just want to say thank you all very much for all of the work that you have done. I've discovered the world of volunteering here. There's so much opportunity to volunteer in Bristol, it's unbelievable. You'll always be part of this city, so for those of you that are leaving us, don't forget us and please come back soon. Huge congrats class of 2021. I'm super, super proud of all of you. I can't wait to see all the amazing things we'll go out and do. And go out and be great. My message for the class of 2021 is congratulations, guys. It's been a hard year. I'm looking forward to seeing you out and about and going back to the normality. Congrats, guys. It's been such a tough year, but we've done it. Whatever you do, like, just stay relentless. So, although the last year has been incredibly difficult, there is good news, and that is you are going into a world in flux, into a world that's changing, and I think you therefore have the potential to have more impact and make more of a difference than perhaps any of the other graduating classes did before you. The world needs your talents, the world needs your qualification, and Bristol has given you the best possible start in that regard. So go out there, and make the most of it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Class of 2021. So congratulations again and well done. You've earned your success and we're very proud of you. Well done guys. Top job at Bristol Uni. Congratulations. So I, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, tin pot history of, of, of the, your time in Bristol. Um, so it's now time for us to hear from a very special speaker. Uh, we're lucky to have one of our own alumni join today, Dr. Tom Carter. Uh, Tom started exploring ultrasound technology during his final year of his master's degree in computer science at Bristol. He further developed the initial concept to form the basis of his PhD studies, during which he published numerous papers and filed various patents. 
Recognizing the technology's commercial viability, Tom founded Ultra Haptics in November 2013 and launched the world's first and only mid-air haptics solution. Since then, as CTO, Tom has gone on to launch commercial products and lead technology innovation at the company. Tom was also instrumental in the acquisition of Leap Motion in May 29, which resulted in the company becoming Ultra Leap. Tom continues to lead on all technology developments at Ultra Leap. So we are honoured to have Tom with us today, and I would like to hand over to Tom now to address you, our engineering graduates. Tom. Thanks very much, Ian. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Tom, uh, and before anything else, I just want to say congratulations. Making it to this point is an incredible achievement, uh, and I'm sure that you are all leaving with skills, experience, and friends that are going to provide a, a tremendous base for your careers and lives ahead. So it's a super exciting time. Um, for myself, uh, I was class of 2011, uh, studied computer science at the University of Bristol. So 10 years ago, uh, around now, I was stood in the Merchant Ventures building, um, coming towards the end of my degree with a graduate job lined up in Bath with a really good company. And my final year project during my undergrad degree, uh, I built, uh, as Ian um, just mentioned there, this, this ultrasound based technology that projects the feeling of touch through the air uh, and directly onto your hands. So it uses sound waves to vibrate the surface of your skin. And we use that to let you feel whatever you're doing in midair, whether you're reaching out and pressing a button, feeling a button click, whether you're interacting with virtual objects and feeling their shape and texture, or feeling things that don't exist in the real world, like magic spells, lightning bolts firing out of your hands, this kind of crazy stuff. Um, so I'd finished, I'd sort of come, nearly come to the end of, uh, of that research project. It didn't really work super well. Uh, and I had this job lined up. And what happened next was that I quit the job before I'd actually even started it, um, enrolled to do a PhD to really focus on this, this project, this technology, uh, and get it to, to develop it to the point where it was ready to, uh, to go out into the real world. That point happened before I finished my PhD. And in 2013, I founded Ultra Haptics, uh, a sort of a startup, a spin out out of the university. I started building that company, which all in, in many regards, at this point, I would say makes me a, a brave choice to be the person coming to talk to you today, because uh, not, uh, not the usual path. But um, I think that my time at university was a fantastic preparation for the job that I was going to go and do, but it's actually an even better preparation for the path that I eventually chose and ultimately for the chaos and the meandering journey that all of us take through life once we leave university, because ultimately university doesn't just prep us for a job and to be good at doing one thing for one company. Uh, and University of Bristol in particular is, is great at setting that up. I left the university, uh, I would say, as a master of nothing, um, but with a really solid foundation such that I could go on to reach mastery in whichever different uh, direction that I chose. Um, a really great understanding of the fundamental principles rather than being an expert in using one particular uh, tool or software language or, or, or sort of application, an ability to think for myself and to solve problems. And this is a this is a trend that I see every day in Bristol graduates that I work with at Ultraleap and that I work with uh, at other companies as well. Um, it's that that common ability to have a really good foundation, a very good understanding, and then the ability to think for yourselves and solve problems, and that sets you up for a uh, for, for for a very productive and very enjoyable life, I think. So, my journey from that point onwards, started the company. Um, the company has grown tremendously since then. We now have 175 people. We're in six people in six different countries. We have 21 different nationalities. We have really diverse, a really diverse range of different disciplines from electronics engineers, mechanical engineers, machine learning, psychology, biology, artists, as we pull together this uh, very sort of deep fundamental technology that actually marries up to 
the human aspect, right? It's ultimately the bit that reaches out and comes into contact with the user, with the person, and, and we create these experiences. So it's a super stimulating environment to, uh, to, to be in, and I really feed off of those different, different inputs, different aspects, different perspectives on life. Um, as you mentioned, we rebranded from Ultra Haptics to Ultra Leap after making an acquisition of the world's best hand tracking uh, technology company, um, who are based in Silicon Valley. Um, that allow you to take a camera uh, and then the software takes the images from the camera and turns them into real-time 3D models of hands. So we put those two things together, the, the, the haptic feedback that allows you to feel and the hand tracking that allows the computer to see what your hands are doing. And today we ship the technology into virtual reality and augmented reality headsets. So you can put the headset on and use your hands rather than a controller. Um, it's going into next generation cars, replacing the, the center console, sort of the future of the infotainment system there. It's in theme parks and various entertainment installations. And we spent a lot of time over the last 18 months taking public touch screens that you would buy your train tickets on or your food in a fast food restaurant and making them touchless so you can still use them in the same way, but you don't have to touch them or, or spread any pathogens. Oh, and I did take some time off and finish my PhD. Um, so uh, I've done that as well. So it's been an interesting journey, uh, and I honestly couldn't really tell you in a sort of succinct way what my job is, uh, or what my job has been through that journey, because it changes almost on a, a daily basis, if not if a, a weekly basis, if not a daily basis. So what have I learned through that time? Um, I think probably the best thing I've learned is that from this point onwards, you need to learn again how to learn which is a bit of an odd thing to say to a whole group of people who are completing formal education uh, and have spent a long time getting that fundamental basis as to how to learn. But an observation I've had is that the most successful people I encounter never stop learning. They don't sort of reach the point of concluding qualifications and then uh, cease learning. They're constantly hungry. They're constantly looking for information, how to learn new things, how to get different perspectives. And there's no framework from here which is both a bad thing, but also a good thing, because it means that you can develop your own way of learning that works the best for you. So you can follow your interests, keep discovering, and learning really is a compounding effect. Right? The, the new things you learn are built on top of the things you've learned before, uh, before today, and that means that the people who keep learning just exponentially accelerate away from those who don't, um, from what I've seen. So keep learning, keep, uh, keep discovering. The other thing um, I've picked up is, uh, which maybe both of these things are, are obvious to most people, but it took me a long time to figure them out. Um, it's really the way to create opportunities and then capitalize on them. Um, and I, I liken this a little bit to uh, a, an all you can eat steak restaurant that I went to in Texas, where they had these little uh, coasters. It was green on one side and red on the other. And the uh, waiters, waiting staff, walked around the restaurant with cuts of meat on these big skewers. And if your coaster was green, they'd walk over to you and they'd carve off a bit of meat onto your plate and they'd move on. And if it was red, that meant you had enough and they would they would leave you alone for a bit. And I think life is a little bit like that as well in terms of whether you say yes or no to things. Saying yes opens doors, it creates opportunities, it creates luck. Um, it, it means that you encounter those lucky situations that accelerate your life. But if you just keep constantly saying yes to everything, you can become overloaded and then you don't really have time to capture on the best opportunities that you have. So it's a little bit like that restaurant. Uh, one person on my table just left their, uh, their ticket on green. They ended up with way too much stuff on their plates. Good cuts of meat go cold. Uh, you don't really have time to capitalize on them. Uh, whereas if you sit there with your card on red, you might look across and see everybody else with their plates full of opportunities and think, how do I, how do I get that? Why are they so lucky? So, Practice using that switch. Practice going through phases of life, saying yes to everything and just seeing where it gets you, seeing what opportunities open up, but also know when you've got something really good. Uh, try to recognize when actually now is the time to get your head down and, and capitalize on that and make the most of it. Uh, switch over to, to red, say no, uh, so you can do that. You're all obviously finishing university in pretty unique circumstances. So um, from my perspective, that uh, gives you even more reason than usual to say yes and, uh, and, and collect these opportunities. And then final thing is that uh, I was asked to, to, to say something inspirational uh, as part of this. And that, that sort of got me thinking like, okay, so 
inspirational. What what actually is inspiration? What does that what does that mean? Um, and for me, I associate inspiration with that that click feeling that you get when two unrelated things in your brain suddenly fit together. I think you kind of you go through life building up this graph of knowledge in your head uh, of connecting things and learning things. And inspiration is when you already have these two bits of the graph and suddenly you realize that they actually connect together and you didn't realize that before. So finding different perspectives, different people, different backgrounds, different locations, different fields of, uh, of study um, create those opportunities for that click, for that inspiration. So I don't think I can actually sit here and inspire you. I think only you can go and inspire yourselves by finding those, uh, th those different things, finding uh, different perspectives and building that graph in your head and, and, and finding those clicks. Bristol engineers are naturally curious types, so don't lose that. You have all of the skills to apply yourself to a huge range of problems and your interests and your training combined uh, was what make you, makes you unique. Um, like this inspiration, it sits at the intersection of different fields and uh, you can find things that, that nobody else can. So the more you explore, the more inspiration that you'll find. And I think the, uh, the happier and more fulfilling life you'll lead. So that is all to say, good luck. Um, keep learning, say yes, say no, uh, and seek inspiration. Um, and for my part, I really look forward to seeing the dent in the universe that's made by the class of 2021. Thank you very much, Tom. <clears throat> so it's now an opportunity to ask Tom some questions. Uh, there's a, a link in the, in, the, in the bottom of your screen, I hope, which should allow you to put questions in. I uh, would like to open it up to you all to, to probe Tom as to, to uh, how, how his approach has, has helped him. So there's a couple of questions I already have here. A uh, question here for you, Tom. What advice uh, do you give to a generation who are likely to have a job that doesn't exist yet? Yeah, great, great, great question. Um, I think a lot of it harks back to those themes. It's it's um, don't, don't feel like you have to fully focus on one skill. Right? You don't have to get really, really good at one thing. In the future, I think diversity of experience and diversity of talent and diversity of skills is going to be phenomenally useful. But change is accelerating and the world is changing incredibly quickly. What is uh, valuable today will be different tomorrow. Um, and the people who are best positioned to capitalize on that are the people who have that real fundamental understanding of core core principles both in terms of engineering but also in terms of like life and the world and how everything works and then that diverse range of experiences and skill sets so they, you can see things as they start to come together you can you can find those clicks um and you can uh you, you can position yourself to, to make the most of, uh, of of the changing world and make an impact thank you um another good question here what what was your first win that made you confident that you were doing the right thing? Oh, that's a very good question. So I think I was design, I was sort of working on the technology as part of my, my, my project in my undergrad degree. And um, one of the great things that Bristol did that not many other universities seem to do is give the opportunity to study things that were not just the straight degree. So I also did an enterprise module on sort of writing business plans at the same time. And we had to do a Dragon's Den style pitch. And I got really good feedback from it's like a, an actual venture capital investor on the panel and uh, somebody who worked for a big telecoms company. Uh, that gave me that first sort of like indication of, hey, maybe this is actually a good idea and I'm not completely crazy. Um, and then, uh, then afterwards, I think it's just, there is never a big, uh, a big single win or big singular event that lets you know, yes, this was the right thing to do. Everything is correct. Uh, I still haven't had that. Like even today, I still don't, you know, entirely fully know deep down inside this is definitely the best thing. But um, from speaking to people running, you know, companies that are far bigger and far more successful than uh, than Ultraleap is, the thing I've discovered is that doesn't change. You know, people running some of the largest companies in the world still wake up every morning with a whole load of emails of all the things that they're currently doing wrong, worrying and thinking that you know this is not going well, and uh, that's sort of life. So you've got to take the uh, take the good signals as they come and build on that and know that it's it, the whole sort of like, it's a journey thing is really true. 
uh, you'll never kind of get there. It's all about keeping going and uh, and, and uh, finding happiness in, uh, in in what you achieve step by step. So to kind of follow on to that, I guess, is what's your top tip for staying motivated? Well, motivated is interesting. So um, that's a fantastic question. Uh, I think probably top tip is actually to look after your, your body and your health and your mind. Um, I think you can do, I've certainly learned this the hard way. Like I really like what I do. I love my job. Um, but if that becomes all consuming, it stops being enjoyable. Uh, and that happens surprisingly quickly. Like it doesn't matter what you, um, what you enjoy. Like you can love chocolate, but if you just eat chocolate, you're going to pretty quickly get sick of chocolate. So, um, you've got to keep a, a, a balance. It's all of the kind of simple, obvious things of like eating healthily, doing exercise, looking after your mental health. Health. Honestly, the times where I, I lose motivation, I go for a run, take a break, recover, go spend time with my wife, go out and spend time with friends. And uh, I think that is, that is the most powerful motivating factor that you can, that you can have. Thanks. Um, what does the future look like for Ultraleap? Where do you see the technology going um, in being used in the future? I mean, you made reference to it briefly, but what, what do you think the roadmap looks like for Ultraleap? Yeah, good, good question. So the, the next, the next few years, we see um, kind of larger adoption in virtual reality, augmented reality, particularly in enterprise applications. People are using it to design cars and train astronauts on the spaceships going up to the International Space Station as to where all the switches and buttons are. Um, it's going to be in vehicles, kind of the applications that I've seen. And hopefully, you know, many of you will be uh, using the tech to uh, order your tickets at train stations and uh, and things like this in a safe way as we come out of the uh, of the pandemic. But uh, the long term vision of the company, where where we're really heading, is that we believe that augmented reality is the next computing platform. Like in the same way that we shifted to using. Uh, PCs and laptops with the uh, Bill Gates and Microsoft's a PC on every desk that sounded kind of uh, sci-fi when he said it through to the shift to smartphones. We believe the next shift is to augmented reality that ultimately in the future, uh, as we can sit here on this uh, virtual event and assume that everybody has a smartphone near them, everybody in the future will, uh, will have some form of augmented vision through glasses, contact lenses, however it happens. You'll be able to see virtual content out in the in the world around you. Will blur what's a real physical object and what's a virtual object sat next to it. And in that kind of world, we're just not going to accept interacting with things using controllers or devices. You're not going to sort of click at one thing and then use your hands on another. We're going to want to use the best interfaces we've ever had, which is our hands. So our real aim and drive here as a company is to. Uh, is to be one of those key interface technologies. You'll use your voice to talk to the computer, but uh, probably the majority of time, you'll use your hands to reach out and interact with virtual stuff that is uh, that is around you. People call it the metaverse, this whole sort of additional layer on top of the, uh, the real world. Um, and that's what we're trying to build. We're trying to build that technology that removes the barriers between the human and the content uh, and allows you to sort of live in this world with digital stuff rather than seeing it through a screen and, and poking at it. Thanks, Tom. So looking sort of across the piece a bit more, what other startups or companies have inspired you? Oh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of good ones in, uh, in, in Bristol and in the UK and, and, and beyond. Um, in Bristol, there's a few uh, phenomenal startups at the moment. There's one called Open Bionics, um, which is incredibly inspiring. They have created 3D printed prosthetics, so like prosthetic arms and soon to be prosthetic legs, um, that it are about a tenth of the price of a conventional prosthetic. Um, so that's great, particularly for younger people because they can have regular updates to their prosthetics so their arms are actually the right size for their body rather than having to make do with one that's too big and then too small. And then they did a team up with Disney and a few other content providers uh, for actual theming of those arms so you can have if you're like a little uh boy with a prosthetic arm rather than it being a negative in the playground you have iron man's hand with a glowing light in the palm uh or elsa's hand from frozen it's just incredible 
uh, incredible impact on on people's lives, making that more accessible and making it something that they actually want to have, which is uh, which is super cool. Um, outside of that, uh, I think there's uh, Leap, Leap Motion was a a startup that definitely inspired me. The the hand tracking company that um, I was super happy to be able to bring on board and uh, and join Ultra Haptics when I was doing my studies they were one i was looking at dreaming of or you know wouldn't it be crazy if i could start a company in silicon valley um so that was uh that was very exciting so yeah the companies that, in, that inspire me most are those that that think differently um that uh that try to make some kind of fundamental change to improve how people how we as humans do things um and uh yeah those are uh, those are a couple of great ones thanks tom so just just coming back to the kind of your experience a little bit here um networks and meeting people is obviously critical and i think you touched on it briefly in in your in your talk earlier um what what would you recommend to the class of 21 how, how do you build those networks and how do you make use of those networks that's a yeah really good question um some, something that to be honest i have i'm like naturally not very good at that i i'm a uh i'm far happier sort of sat on my own with my laptop than out in large crowds of people um you know walking around and and, and talking to them so uh, a lot of it comes down to two things like first is practice like getting out there and doing it going to meetups in whichever city you're living in like find people in a similar career path to you um there's there's so many different activities that happen now like the best ones have some kind of talk there which is a great focus. So you can go, you can learn something from great people doing stuff in your um, in your in your industry or in your sector, and then that actually gives you something to talk about with the people that you mingle with afterwards. Networking, and it's amazing how many things pop up just from that uh, sort of talking to people in the same space and connecting, and then telling them what you do and uh, finding people who have similar ideas to you, and then whether that means you know a good career path opens up because they uh, remember you from the event or whether it's you thinking and working out for yourself actually what you really enjoy and what you'd really like to be working on. And um, yeah, I, 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 to be honest, I, I hate going up to people that I don't know and talking to them like that. It's not something that comes naturally to me, but just doing it and repeating it and practicing and remembering that pretty much everybody else is in the same position people who are great at it are pretty rare. <laughs> Most people uh, uh, are in a similar boat to you. Um, they know what it's like, they're pretty friendly. Uh, it works out okay. And then the second part of that really is keeping in touch with them. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, uh, like a, I think like a general premise or a reluctance to actually reach out and contact somebody, particularly in, in the UK. Like it's a bit of a British thing, you know, we don't, uh, don't want to call somebody too much bother, but it's amazing if you just, pick somebody and email them, uh, nine times out of 10, they'll, they'll, they'll reply. And if they don't, the worst thing that's happened is you've sent them an email that they haven't replied to, like no harm done, no, no, no lasting damage there. So uh, if ever you're sort of sat there thinking, should I, should I reach out to that person? Yes or no, even if you've met them or you haven't, yes, like do it, Give them, send them a message. Uh, you never know what, what comes back or, or what opens up. The first, the first thing I did after starting the company, we went to Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, biggest biggest show for the consumer electronics industry in the world. I knew nobody, but beforehand, I just started figuring out the email addresses of CEOs of massive companies um, using a plugin for Gmail that brought up their LinkedIn profile for their email address. I just type it in, no, this one, no, that way around. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, Send it to them, and uh, all but one of them replied and led to some kind of meeting. And yeah, so reach out talk to people uh people want to help that's kind of a natural natural mode brilliant well, thanks tom um i think we've pretty much exhausted our questions at, at that point are there any final words of advice you'd like to offer to the student? final words of advice i guess i guess the one other thing i would add particularly that, that sort of struck me particularly now um with i think it's, it's, it's been a trend with the way the world is uh is changing um and the way you know traditional jobs are changing the, the whole way the, the world functions is, is is changing but then massively accelerated by uh, by the pandemic as we're all in our homes doing a lot of these things over the internet kind of pushed accelerated that move to the internet which is actually just i i think that the power of writing well is far greater today than it has been at a lot of times in the past 
um, you know, doing things like this, talking to people is uh, is great, and you can spark some some good ideas. But you, you're limited to the number of people you can possibly talk to at the same time. Whereas writing, you can write something down once, and it can be read by thousands or tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people over time. So that doesn't mean sort of English literature essays, but writing in really clear language that people can understand to get your points of view across, to get your values across, to get what you want to do, what you want to achieve, and then putting it out there into the world, whether that's Twitter, social media, whether that's uh, blog posts, whether that's um, sort of some other way of, of, of publishing is just, I think, an increasingly powerful uh powerful tool and as a lot of the working world is moving to remote working as well increasingly we're having to communicate via email and uh, written documents and collaborative editing so if you are able to hone and work on communicating in writing uh, i think that's going to be a a very powerful skill to have over uh, over the coming years thanks tom i think you're right i think communication is an absolutely essential requirement isn't it it's particularly in the fast moving age that we're in thank you so much for joining us today tom it's been really uh, interesting and I, and I hope the audience has, has found that insightful as well particularly as you're one of us uh, you've, you've had that lived experience of being at bristol so yeah thanks thank a lot you for having again. Me. that's okay thank you thank you for taking the time out to be with us i, I know you're a busy you're a busy man So we're now coming to the, towards the end of the celebration event. Shortly, we'll be finishing with some student performances from Bristol Suspensions, the University A Cappella Society, and the Bristol University Music Society. Uh, and then we'll see your messages to continue to be displayed, and the chat will remain up until 11.15, when the event will formally close. After the performance, there will also be a short poll for you to complete, along with some important links in respect to the Career Service and Alumni Association. So it just remains for me to say thank you for joining us today. We, we do sincerely hope it will not be long before we can welcome you back in person to the university for, for graduation ceremonies. Uh, thank you to all our guest speakers again, Professor Brady, Amy and Tom. Uh, and on behalf of everyone at the university, including all the faculty staff, it's been such a pleasure to have been on this journey with you. Uh, we hope the university has given you the skills and the knowledge that you need to make that impact in your chosen field. We're all absolutely sure you'll go on to do great things and make us extremely proud. Uh, so from all of us at University of Bristol, it's, it's not a goodbye, it's a see you later.